Happy to have you with us again, Dave Barnett, along with Dave Rowe. There's quite a bit riding on this one today as Texas Tech will try to keep their still alive Cotton Bowl hopes going. And TCU wants a rare November victory and a 500 record. And Dave Rowe, to do that, you figure that they have got to stop a trend, and that is Ron Giles and company in the triple shoot turning the ball over. Boy, have they ever had problems turning over. I know that's been on Jim Wacker's mind all week. But it starts with Ron Giles, and he has got one statistic that is alarming, and that is the number of interceptions. 16 interceptions he forces the ball into coverage they cannot do that today of course in the triple shoot they've got three wide outs they also have the triple option capability in running the ball but two of his favorite receivers are the tight end Blackwell and the slot back Michael Jackson and boy has Kelly Blackwell had an excellent last two games the last two games he's had nine catches 123 yards and he is a main threat in this triple shoot triple threat this is the final home game at Jones Stadium for some 20 Texas Tech seniors including James Gray they can get him a milestone if he gets 32 yards today. But, you mean if? I guarantee you they'll get him 32 yards. To get him over 1,000, they'll do it right away because then he can get down to work and do what they do best. They want to win this game desperately. When we were here early in the season, they had a real question at quarterback, and Jamie Gill has erased those questions. Well, I think Billy Joe Tolliver probably said it best. He said when he left, they were going to call Jamie Gill Thrill Gill. And boy, look at last week. He thrilled them all with a 15 of 22, 224 yards. What a day. Well, this is Veterans Day, and among the observances here at Jones Stadium, a flyover in the missing man formation from Reese Air Force Base. They had the 64th flying training wing overhead coinciding about $6,000 for the American Cancer Society. Well, that's a great tribute there. A lot of, uh, a lot of interest. They ran that ball a long way. Just got here. Spike Dykes, quite honestly, a little bit worried about today because in the past, when they've had their big upsets, they've had a letdown the following week. Or oh, they have. When they beat AM, they came back and lost the following week. They beat Oklahoma State, they came back and lost the following week. And that has been foremost on his mind all week. He doesn't want to take the enthusiasm away, but he wants to get the guys back down to just back down to earth where they can play football. Tech leads the series, and they've lost here to TCU only once since 1963. That was 17 years ago. Great conditions, as we said. And as always here in Lubbock, the wind should come into play. And Kevin Portsman has us underway. This is going to be Dudley McAfee, who decides not to field it. It is a touchback. And you notice right off, I'm sure the red jerseys and the black oh, pants. Boy. This being the home finale for this regular season, they have decided to change up their color scheme. Then. Well, it was interesting. They came out and warmed up with the black jerseys. I was just as surprised as you were to see them. And Jamie Gill, again a quarterback, near perfect to Texas last week, including the game-winning touchdown to Anthony Mannyweather. With him in the backfield, as we mentioned, James Gray, and he's just 32 yards to get his second 1,000-yard season. Winston, the fullback. And you saw the receivers, the offensive line led by Odie Warren and Richburg on that left side. They break the eye formation on first down. Hill almost stumbling on play action, has a day and a half. And the wide side of the field is open. But he's chased down and picks up only about three yards as Daryl Davis, ultra quick defensive end, a senior from Midland right there, 6'3", 257 pounds, makes the tackle with him up front, Washington, Wyatt, and Collins. The linebackers in their 4-3, Booker, Smith, and Cobble. And in the secondary, Gallabies, McWright, Crump, and Campbell. So from the 23-yard line, the Raiders second down and seven yards to go. They have both their wideouts on the left side. They would prefer to run the ball the vast majority of the times today. And Gray powering up near the 29-yard line. That will be close, but not quite for the first down. Gallabies brought him down. Good block by Richburg. As you look at Gray's numbers this year, Texas Tech musts for this afternoon. What are they? Well, first of all, avoid another letdown. They seem to have that big game and then all of a sudden have that letdown. Capitalize on the turnovers. They should create the turnovers and be able to capitalize on them. TCU has been very guilty of that. And have James Gray gain over 100 yards. That has really been a statistic that we'll look at when he gains over 100 yards rushing. They rarely lose when that happens. Third call at two. They try Gray. Second effort, he has the first down up to the 36-yard line. A fine block by Travis 
Price to get him around that corner. And Lavoie Crump made the tackle on the senior from Fort Worth. You know, emotions play such a big part in it. I don't doubt that the red jerseys was, were saved until the last minute. And I'm sure that's part of Spike Dykes is just trying to get him, get his team motivated. Look what James Gray has done against TCU. That is unbelievable. 6.3 yards per carry. That's his three prior seasons. However, TCU has had an outstanding running defense this year. They shut down some big backs. On first down, a floater well behind the tight end, Kevin Sprinkles. And it was a near interception for Ed Galladies. Not a well-thrown ball into the wind by Jamie Gill. And that's an important point to bring up about, uh, about your TCU defense here, Dave, is that they have played the run very, very well. We saw what they did against Air Force, and Air Force came into this into their game with TCU, and they were highly ranked as far as running the ball. They were top ranked. Yeah. And only because of what the Frogs did, they held them to about 230 yards, are they now behind Nebraska. Manny Weather in motion on second down. Will play action. This time the pressure is there. And at the 27-yard line, he has popped it up. And a TCU recovery. Wow, does that play a big part? You do not want to give a team like TCU, when you're supposed to be the favor, you can see Jim Wacker there. You don't want to give him the ball in this, this field position. But Gill just gets a little sloppy here. The ball gets pulled away from him. He falls backwards, and they just cannot cover back over top of it. Good charge there by TCU. Well controlled. Fred Washington stripped the ball, and Daryl Davis made the recovery. So a turnover-prone TCU sees how the other half lives. Giles under pressure from Rowe and throws to his offensive lineman as the flag goes down for grounding. Jody Morsk, number 52, the center, was the nearest Horn Frog to that toss. Yeah, that def that's definitely going to be a, that's a that's a critical play right there. You just can't make a mistake like that. Giles under pressure just wanted to get the ball down. What you ought to do is just throw the ball down 15, 18 yards downfield. As they march it back on the intentional grounding call. Intentional grounding. Offense, five-yard penalty, lost the down. Boy. Offensively for TCU in the triple shoot. Giles, Jackson, Palmer, Holmes, and Foray late starting additions at wideouts. Elliott, Sullivan, Morse, Bronson, and Alexander, they have really scrambled an injury-plagued offensive line today. Giles after play action has the open man in the middle. And the catch made by Alan Foray, a senior from Midland. He's brought down by Ronald Ferguson. And that will help the TCU cause after the penalty markoff. Defensively for Tech, Washington, Perry, Hennington, and Mathis Meyer, as has been the case all year. The front four for them. The linebackers, Weatherspoon and Derryberry, who starts for Wingo. Matt Wingo with the turf toe problem. Ferguson, Walker, Dubisky, and Saul, a secondary, seeming to come into their own as the season wears on. Third down and eight for Ron Giles and the Frogs, and it is Tommy Palmer dragged down by Charles Perry. Boy, who else would you think on that front line except Charles Perry? He has just had a marvelous season. Number 74, 65 tackles. He's been in on the sacks. He's had tons of pressures, and he plays his position really well. Controls his guard, plays off him, tackles for a loss. So Kevin Portsman will go for a school record. If he makes it, that's eight straight field goals. His last miss was in the opener at Missouri from 52. This is a 41-yarder. He has the win behind him. And he's got plenty of leg, but he is wide right. Well, will that spur up your defense? When you stop them, you give them the ball, your offense turns it over, your defense comes over, and look at the defensive coordinator. Just saying, that's the way to go, guys. At the seventh. And that put him over a thousand yards. 69 yards for James Gray. And he almost fumbled this. Watch the pitch. It was way low. See, we had to scoop it down by his knees. He barely got up. Great block right there. Kick out. See the guard kick out right there? Gray plays off that block, and it's off to the races here. He gets run down on the angle, but what a run for James Gray. He's now over a thousand yards. 
we saw his previous best run of the year, 53 yards, about the same point of the game in, in uh, Lubbock against New Mexico. Second time he has gone over the 1,000-yard mark in quick movement on the left side by Charles Odiorn for Texas Tech. Well, he joins an elite group here at, uh, at Texas Tech. Only James had not. I think had not did it twice, if I'm not mistaken. Offense. But Alexander, our referee, had not twice, Doug McCutcheon once, and now Gray twice. And, of course, that's that's quite a plateau. So that is out of the way, and now he's, he's still well, got some okay. milestones to chase as he goes up the Southwest Conference career rushing and touchdown ladders. And the Raiders, after the five-yard mark-off, two tight ends, Bart Talkington has checked in. Along with Sprinkles, and now in motion goes Lewis Sheffield. Anthony Lynn giving Gray a quick breather. Brought down just inside the 15 by Roosevelt Collins. You know, sometimes you overlook great effort, but there was also a great effort on TCU because they had a defensive back who ran Gray down. Now, if they don't, you think automatically they're going to go in and score, but this TCU unit has been a tough unit versus the run. For somebody to give that kind of effort on a, on a run like that, sometimes you just turn and look at him, watch him go. But that defensive back, and I, I didn't see who it was, ran him down, and it may be a saving tackle. Robert McWright had the late burst of speed. Second down, 15, no gain on first down. So Gray back in for Lynn, and he also is stopped at the 15. And this is why TCU had a fair amount of confidence coming into this game. They have held down the greats. Last week, Chuck Weatherspoon of Houston only 34 yards on 15 carries. And then a few weeks ago, D. Dallas only 28 yards. That's amazing. And their defense, their defense has been a kind of a who's who and who's who not hurt. They play. Manny Weather and Price wide right. Sheffield in motion on third and 15. They keep it on the ground to Gray on the short side of the field. And a pickup of maybe three before Collins knocks him out of bounds. And a field goal situation after the 69-yarder by Gray set him up in great shape, first and goal at the seven. And you kind of go back to that great play by McWright to run him down. He was the only person who had a shot at him when Gray broke through, and he ran him to the sideline and played well. Of course, McWright with that great speed, 4.5 and a 40-yard dash, he can run down a lot of guys. Jamie Simmons will hold for Lynn Elliott, who has not had a good year, only 5 of 12, but he has hit some long ones. This one from 29 yards, angle to the right, and he's good. So T nothing after the Lynn Elliott field goal. Well, he's a very emotional coach. That's the way he coaches. He, you'll see him on the sidelines. We look at the scoring drive, five plays. Of course, the big one was that uh, long run by James Gray. And Elliott will kick back deep for the Frogs. Charles Britton and Kevin Fry. And from the goal line, it is Corey Ford, late addition to their specialty team, and he is out across the 15-yard line. TCU musts today. Well, first of all, eliminate turnovers. They have had a horrible time. 15 fumbles, 22 interceptions. Pressure Jamie Gill. Jamie Gill can sit back there. They had 22 sacks. TCU had 22 sacks in the first six games. They've had three in the last, one sack in the last three games. And the third one is most important. Play effectively for 60 minutes. In the second half, Tech has had a tremendous fourth quarter, and TCU has just, they've just kind of, almost like they've wielded in the fourth quarter. They haven't wielded, they've just had so many players just go down and have injuries that they just don't play well in the second half. Tommy Palmer, the cutback, gets a maybe two before Tom Mathismeyer, the right defensive end, makes the stop. Palmer, great story, off triple ligament surgery in his very first game at TCU at Boston College. He's also had a broken foot. He has fought back from all those injuries. Notre Dame, 26-6, but SMU scored on a Mike Romo touchdown pass. That made it 24-6, and then it got strained. Well, then, then uh, they blocked the extra point and ran it back for two points. Interesting, that's only the second time that I know of that it happened, and both of them with Notre Dame involved. It was Rice, Notre Dame yeah. last year. Rice did it. Palmer again, off left tackle. And he powers his way out, maybe across the 25 for a gain of five yards. And again, Mathis Meyer was there for the contact. 
You talked about how TCU has been kind of a fade team in the second half. One problem has been injuries, as you mentioned. The other problem is extreme youth. About half their team is freshman and redshirt freshman. Youngest oh, team yeah. except for SMU. Duke surprising North Carolina State by that margin in the second quarter. And Florida and Georgia are scoreless also in the second. Third down and three for the Frogs with Michael Jackson in motion. Palmer for the third straight time has the speed to get the corner turned and should have the first down or at least be very close. Boy, I thought he made a critical mistake there when he dipped back out to try to get in. When you, What you have got to do in this situation is you've got to know how far you have got to get for first down. And when he makes that second little dip outside, he may have dipped back. Now watch right here. Put your head down and get it. Now watch, he dips right here, back out again, and he got run out of bounds. I'm not sure he's going to make it. That cost him the first. You're yeah. exactly right. Yeah, you have got to know what you've got to get. You've got to put your head down and get that first down. So Rex Roberts... Former star on the soccer team at TCU. He punted one time before this year, and that was as a seventh grader. That was the sum total of his football career. This one is end over end, and Tracy Saul bobbles it. May have managed to fall on it back near the 30-yard line, and another big hearing in the background. That's it. Go Tech and their little clickers. Now, this may work in reverse because, remember, uh, isn't it uh, at TCU where they had all the crickets all over the field? And TCU may think that they're at home, so you better be careful with these little clickers. <laughs> Crowd expected to be around 40,000 today, so not everybody got a clicker. Anthony Lynn. Around right end and across the 35-yard line, a pickup of about three. And with Gray's big 69-yard burst, Lynn has already seen some early duty. He's the heir apparent. As soon as Gray graduates, he'll inherit that eyeback position. And he's just a sophomore. And that's a nice average, four and a half yards. Of course, that's all reflective of that great offensive line that they have, that senior line that they, they play behind here at Tech. All seniors and very deep and more than a few times during the course of the game. They'll put in their second team offensive line. Let them go for a while. Clifton Winston with his first carry of the day. He, like Gray, a senior. Last home game for him. He's out of Houston Smiley. And a very active Roosevelt Collins with another stop for TCU. And Collins plays this position well. Look at that. Sheds this block, closes down inside, makes the tackle. Doesn't get it, doesn't wrap him up. But when you get, you have to control that end. You have to shed that block. And he did that very well on that play. And you close from inside, from outside in from that end position. On third and five, three wideouts, and no tight end as the Clickers come up in unison. And Jamie Gill again will be sacked back at the 32-yard line, the second sack for the Frogs, and Richard Booker came on a blitz from the strong linebacker position. And that evidently was going to be a quick pass, and it didn't open for him because Gill only set about four yards off the line of scrimmage. When he set back there, he set short, looked up, and then could not make the readjustment. So evidently it was a fast pass that just was covered, and he couldn't get it off. So Jamie Simmons will punt it away. And the return on for TCU. This is a marvelous kick, and Mike Houston takes it back at his 15. And Dave, he did a good job to squeeze four yards out of that return. Yes, he did. That was that had great hang time. That's exactly what you want. They not only time the distance that a punt goes, the length that it goes, you hang that, you hang that, you time, excuse me, the hang time, how long it hangs in the air. And the minute he caught that ball, there were red shirts right around him. That was a great punt. So the Horn Frogs trailing 3-0, first and 10 at their 19-yard line. And as usual, three wide receivers. The hang time on that, four and a half seconds. Wow. And the toss is to Curtis Martins. Maybe a two-yard pickup. Charles Perry, the defensive tackle, senior from Iowa Park on the tackle. And Motkins, somewhat uh, like Anthony Lynn, a guy who is really going to figure more in the future for TCU. He is a true freshman from Marlin in Central Texas. Right, and he's the kind of back that just kind of just slashes through holes. He's not that back that quickly sees the hole, makes the cut, and accelerates. He just slashes through there, and they really like his running style. Giles with the give to Motkins. And he is blasted once he got near the 25 after a pickup of three. Ryan Gerlich and Sammy Walker 
Number 25 right there, the sophomore from McKinney. And Walker coming off maybe his best game ever as a Red Raider. He had nine tackles and two huge interceptions in Austin. You talked about huge ones. I was watching the outside linebacker that time close that trap. Boy, I'll tell you, that, that's a play that just takes courage. When you turn around there and you got those big guards pulling out, you have got to close that thing. You give it everything you've got. On third and five, straight drop. Giles under-throwing Michael Jackson in double coverage. So he made the decision, and it looked like he never looked off of Jackson. That's exactly what he did. He was going to try to run Jackson on a little flip pattern where he runs down about five yards and cuts straight across the field. Now watch the head of Giles. See him looking right out here? Now see the little slip right there? He never takes his eyes off. He threw in the double coverage right there. They had him just wiped out. He had two wide, uh, two wide receivers going downfield, but he was concentrating strictly on him. Lucky that was an interception number 17. This not a good punt by Roberts and fair caught by Brian Dubisky at the 45-yard line in the first real good field position of the day for Texas Tech to start a drive. 31 yards is it on the Rex Roberts punt. Well, we talked about Gray going up the ladder. He's already passed Ben Cowens of Arkansas and very much within reach today of Walter Abercrombie, who was number seven, and then later on, he's got two more games to try and catch Curtis Dickey. Well, you can see there, those, well, all those ones that are ahead of them have all played and done exceptionally well. Abercrombie, I saw Dickey in there. They've all played in the NFL and done extremely well. That's the caliber running back that he is. Winston, the man in motion, and Gill looking on play action to a wide open Travis Price and out of the tackle and out of bounds at the 26. Dave, I said yesterday, I said yesterday to Spike, I said, how fast is Travis Price? He said, oh, probably about five seconds in the 40-yard dash. I said, oh, come on. He said, and he asked one of the players, the player said four or five, and I thought Spike was going to die. He said, you think he's that fast? He shows how he, he has that great speed. He has excellent hands, and gosh, he never made a bigger catch than he did in that A&M game. Two of them, two late touchdowns yeah. in their comeback. Reggie Campbell was the man who drove him out of bounds. Second big play of the day already for the Raiders. Ray looking for a block. Rolls down near the 20. And a nice six-yard pickup on first down. The block set by Charles Odeorn and the tackle by Buddy Wyatt, the right defensive tackle. And if you're a Red Raider fan, this is exactly what you want to do. You want to take, and you have got to capitalize when you get good field position. TCU, conversely, did not capitalize when they got that one great field position. And it's a game of field position. The game is played. It just, you just it takes a long time to regain that field position if you don't capitalize on it. The big surprise that Forsman missed that field goal after he hit seven straight. Winston darting through the hole, now outside, and he's inside the 10-yard line. Robert McWright made his second saving tackle. Winston goes for 13. And they talk about fast feet. You want to see fast feet? This is what fast feet are. It's coming right at you. Now watch his feet when he skips into the hole there and then jumps out. Now watch right here. Boom, plant and get back out. You see the move by Robert McWright? Just plant and turn right around to get back outside. But a nice move by Clifton Winston, one of the seniors, of course, in this game today. Red Raiders now first and goal, seven-yard line. This is where they started first and goal on that other drive, and then the penalty knocked them back. Sheffield went in motion, pitch to Gray. Again, the short side of the field, inside the five. And Robert McWright, again, was there to knock him out of bounds, the senior from Dallas Roosevelt. You know, interesting about McWright is we if we brought his name up several times on key plays. He's one of those defensive backs. He, he doesn't look big. 190 pounds, you know, you think, well, he's not that big. But he bench presses over 400 pounds. Kids want to know how to play in the Southwest Conference. You've got to be strong. One thing that says a lot about his activity, he's the third leading tackler from right cornerback where yeah. you shouldn't get that much action. Absolutely. They're blitzing. On second and four, nailed, maybe for a loss of one, Sheffield. And the first man to greet him was Fred Washington. Well, you can tell that when they came up to the line. When you've got 11 purple helmets up on the line of scrimmage, you say, I think they're coming at us. And that time they get right, they stopped that play up the middle. 
big third down here. You don't want to settle for another field goal because that makes two drives where one touchdown can take the lead. You've almost got to come away with seven points in this situation. Raiders with two wideouts this time and no full house in the backfield. Manny Weather went in motion. Hill going for it, has him, touchdown. It wasn't 65 yards like last week in Austin, but they'll take it. Well, if I remember right, Manny Weather is one of those walk-ons that we talked about, that we have talked about, and the crowd here loves it. Got a little slam pattern right at the post. He just makes that quick break and brings that ball in. Good concentration because, I'll tell you, that's a tough pass when that Gill gets back there and just rifles it at you. Elliott has missed only one extra point, 21 of 22, and keeps that trend alive. There's Anthony Mannyweather and the Hilton Honors Program, which offers frequent travelers the fastest route to a free hotel stay. Call 1-800-HILTONS for details. Well, this is that touchdown play again. Watch Mannyweather right across it there. It's a drill right to him. Good concentration right there. You want to make sure you get down with it. And we talked about him being a walk-on. They have had great success here with walk-on starters, not just players, walk-on starters. That means that you don't have a chance to play anywhere else. And they've walked on and made this team. And look at the impact of some of those players. I think of Mathis Meyer and Weatherspoon, of course, Manny Weather. No way they'd be 6-2 and two without that group. Corey Ford had his knees down at the 8-yard line. And some specialty team problems for TCU here in the early going. A true freshman from Tyler here having a hard time bringing this one in. Well, the, the play here is that he's down and touches the ball. You see right there, that's a perfect freeze of exactly what, that's what the call is. He was down and touched the ball. Of course, in the NFL, you can get up and run, but not on that one. Well, the poor punt set up only a 55-yard touchdown drive for the Raiders. Third touchdown catch of the year by Manny Weather. And for Gill, it was touchdown pass number nine. And TCU again with the fumble fingers back at the five-yard line for Ron Giles. In the Baylor game a couple of weeks ago, they had many chances, uh, but caused their own problems, among other things, by not getting clean exchanges from center to quarterback. And most times, and that's surprising because Giles has gotten most of the work here this season. But what it is caused by is the quarterback pulling out too quickly out of center. We see it all the time. You see it a lot of times when they bring in a new quarterback. But that's an error that you just cannot make, especially on your own eight-yard line, because there's a good chance you'll give it back up. In his defense, he's still playing with the strained right throwing wrist. Great protection, and over the middle, the completion for a first down to Michael Jackson. Brought down by Charles Rowe. Jackson, the leading receiver, as just a freshman redshirt with his 33rd catch of the year. And you said much to his credit, and this is to his credit. This is a well-thrown ball. Look at the coverage right there. The coverage is right in front. You can see the ball is just, that's as well as you can throw it. And that's what Giles has done all season. He's had flashes and moments and games of brilliance. And then all of a sudden, they fumble the ball, and he throws interceptions. But that was a great play. Biggest play so far for them, Motkins. Off tackle near the 38-yard line and Mike Derryberry with the stop. Derryberry starting today after being supplanted earlier in the year by Wingo. Now at halftime, Notre Dame the favorite by anywhere between 50 and 60 points. Name your spread. Duke by now 18 in the second quarter and still scoreless in one of the great rivalries in college football. Virginia with the early lead over Virginia Tech on a Dr. Pepper roundup. Motkins got three, second and seven. And Giles again has good protection, has the wide open Allen Foray, and another frog first down. And oh boy, that'll help any kind of a sore wrist. We had talked with Jim Wacker about the sore wrist that Giles had, and that'll help any sore wrist. And that's what Jim Wacker and his crew want to see. They want to see a confident Ron Giles standing back in the pocket, not worrying about the pressure, taking time and finding him. And look how, look how much calmer Jim Wacker seems. Yeah, for him, that's almost home <laughs> Dial for the roll. Again, Jackson. Nice spin move out of the tackle. And down to the 32 and should have another TCU first down. Tracy Saul from free safety made the stop. Boy, Michael Jackson, he's one of those many freshmen that they have on this team. 
just swings out of the backfield. Now, Giles makes a better decision here, finds Jackson. Now, watch Jackson when he gets the ball. Good head down, comes back around, picks up some extra yardage. Interesting, when he played at Corpus Christi, he had 1,300 yards rushing, 1,000 yards catching, and I think that was just his senior year, if I'm not mistaken. They looked at those numbers, and they said this is the prototype for this triple shoot offense we want to install. And Curtis Motkins, another big chunk, 11 yards before he's out of bounds at the 22. What is TCU doing differently from their first two possessions? Well, they've got a much calmer a quarterback in there. Giles is taking control of this team now. Uh, when he sets back up and he gets that little bounce about him, and he stands in that pocket and he's calm, He's a much different quarterback. He doesn't hurry, he doesn't force the ball, he's not worrying about pressure. And this is a, an excellent draw, jive for TCU. They're doing the things they need to do to do them well. First down, 10. This time the draw play for Mikens. Maybe two as he reaches up near the 20-yard line. When that big old veteran defensive line of Texas Tech also, I think of Mathis, Meyer, Hennington in there, and Perry and Washington, they're a solid unit. You know, we talked about all the injuries as we watched the quarter tick down. Texas Tech, I think, I don't, I can't remember a player that they've lost. Who have they lost back there? Well, Rodney Blackshear. That's right, Blackshear. The one. He, he had knee surgery. And that is all. And in a, in a Cinderella year like this, almost any team that does this much better than predicted has helped, among other things, to think. Absolutely. Maybe the last play of the first quarter. Giles not able to escape from Marcus Washington. There's a the flash, and look at Jim Wacker walk away. He's got to be scratching his head on that one because in that situation, when your pocket is crumbling down and you've got the ball on, what, the 18, 19-yard line, you throw the ball away. You get rid of it. Back at Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe, we start the second quarter after the big sack by Marcus Washington. TCU looking now at third down and 19 from the Red Raider 32. What had been a promising drive reaches the key play here. Oh, what a key play that sack was. That automatically takes him almost out of field goal range. They need a big play here. They now have to go into that win. And again, the pressure. But Giles got it off, and Mikens couldn't bring it in. May have taken his eyes off of it too early. Really an interesting play. That was, a, that was a screen where he let all the defensive linemen in and try to drop it over his head. Now watch from the left of your screen, you're going to see the receiver come in. See right there? Boom. You try to throw that over top, but he threw it behind him. He had those big linemen up in his face. He never found them. Good angle right there, because at first it looked yeah. like Modkin's problem, and then that showed how far behind him yeah. it really was thrown. Interesting. So Jim Fourth Walker down. deciding to go for it. Fourth and 19. Aha, uh -huh. Texas, Texas, Texas Tech says, wait a minute, we're going to talk about it, and they call their first time out. And that's good coaching. I want to tell you something about that. They had brought they had brought their, their return team in, and all of a sudden they started to make some changes, and Spike Dyke just quickly, hey, time out. We'll talk about it. We don't want to take the, the timeouts into the locker room. And that's, that's a wise play. You don't get caught in a trick. And Spike Dykes, in situations like this, may have some input, but usually is going to leave the nuts and bolts coaching up to his defensive staff. He really does. He's more of an overseer than he is an actual pointer out of things. He, he's, he leaves a lot of responsibility on his coaches. Just a lot of responsibility. The AP top 25 wins by Tech this year. Arizona, of course, got him off to a great start. Then A&M here on Raycom, and then last week over Texas, and they replaced in the top 25 the Longhorns this week, who dropped out. TCU, their biggest win maybe in the Wacker era, certainly since 1984, over Air Force a few weeks ago. And also in that, included in that, they were two preseason top 25s. They played Oklahoma State, who many th thought was one of the preseason favorites in that top 25, and also Baylor was top ranked. Here we go, fourth down, 19 needed. A little pooch kick, that's what this looks like. See if he doesn't punt from this formation. Just a little tiny pooch kick over top of the head. Oh, I know what they did. They tried to draw him off sides, and they didn't fall for it. 
On fourth and 19, yeah. what are you trying to draw him off sides for? It? Well, one thing was to get better field Probably goals. get a better field position for a field goal. That's a little bit out of his range. That would have been about a 49, maybe a 50-yard field goal. So maybe a good idea, but it didn't work, and so Rex Roberts comes in and presumably will punt as they mark it back to the 37. I and thought they might try that. I thought they might try that little pooch kick where you just try to kick it over top of their heads and let it roll down inside the 20. And this is a pusher. And out of bounds, we'll see where they mark it. 14-yard line. It won't go into the books as much of a punt statistically. 23 yards is all. But it does pin the Raiders back inside the 15. And the crowd's still coming in on the heels of that big win in Austin last week. Not surprisingly, this one is going to get up near sellout proportions. Of course, as you look there, the grassy knoll opposite from uh, where the ball is right now is just about jam-packed. And they've already got the T-shirts out. The merchants will always jump on the <laughs> surprise win. Yes, they will. Maybe 40,000 or so in Jones Stadium by now. Straight up the middle, James Gray rips off another big one. Roosevelt Collins chased him down all the way from right in. Oh, and Gray sees that. Yeah, you know, we have always talked about Gray making people miss. Watch when he sees the cutback right there. See now, he sees that. He plants there, great picture there, and you know, he cuts back, he makes people miss. You're not gonna bring him down with an arm tackle. He's got too much strength in those big legs, and he just rambles out there. Collins with 4-6 speed. He may be, along with Daryl Davis, the quickest defensive end in the Southwest Conference. On the reverse, it's Travis Price. And he is slung down up near midfield. 13 yards for Price. Price on this reverse coming in here. Price had one other reverse for 25 yards. It's just a pause. Now, the, the defensive corner there, I mean, excuse me, in the end, Roosevelt Collins does a good job forcing him deep to allow help to get back there. And then he gets a nice play there by the safety to come over. That was Reggie Campbell to make the tackle. Charles Odeorn threw the key block on Collins. And after Gray went for 23, Price for 13. And just like that, the Raiders are out of any field position trouble. Gray this time for nothing, maybe minus one. Fred Washington quickly on him from left tackle. They say the strongest frog ever in their program. Rich Press is well over 400 pounds. Now at halftime, Duke solidly in front of the Wolfpack. Georgia finally breaks the scoreless tie, still second quarter. And Rutgers surprising West Virginia at halftime. That update on that score, that's 7-3, to three, Florida. They just scored, just heard word on that. In that game. Sheffield in motion. Hill has the tight end, sprinkles, and another first down to the 33 before Galavis made the tackle. And as the season has gone on, Dave, they've looked more and more with excellent results to sprinkle. Yes, he do. They do. And Jamie Gill really stays in the pocket. He gets hit on the tail end and never sees it. But a nice throw to Sprinkles. Sprinkles, again, that big target. Now watch this. He knows he's going to get hit right here. Watch. Boom. And you can see right in front of his face, he goes down. He never sees Sprinkles come down with that ball. But 6'5", 250, you can make those lumbering catches. Nice big target. Senior from Troy. Ninth reception of the year. First and 10, broad 33. And the first man through is Lewis Sheffield fighting to get inside the 30. Switching off at fullback with Winston. Sheffield, a sophomore from San Antonio Wheatley, who began the year as the starter. Then Winston quickly surpassed him, but he still sees a lot of action. And with Gray and Winston both graduating, look for Lynn and Sheffield and Gill to be their offensive. Step right back in. They'll be the stalwarts next year. Three sophomores. Well, that's when you have depth and you got those sophomores back at the seniors and getting a lot of playing time. Moving four yards, second and six, and there was quick movement, and it looked like first from Tommy Webb, the right offensive tackle. Yeah, I think the offense moved that time. Boy, did Daryl Davis get off the ball fast. <laughs> He's a, he, was, he was straight across from the offensive tackle, Tommy Webb, and I mean, he exploded off the ball. 
to wait for the call down, here. Take him down. Take your time, bud. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Well, the scouting report on Webb is quick feet, and in this case, they were too quick. Look at Davis. Now, Davis is out to the left here. He just pew, flies in there. Spike gets in that stance right there. That's, that's his scoring stance, I think. You know, puts pressure on him. He just kind of gets bent over there. So now second down, 11. Gill going for James Gray has the catch and the touchdown. Boy, and what a shot did Jamie Gill get again. The real test of a quarterback is how he stands in that pocket. And I mean, Gill can hear the footsteps on this ball and still throws it out there for James Gray. Again, he never sees the completion. Well, they rarely go to Gray through the air. That's just his 10th catch of the year, but his second touchdown. You know, when I said Spike was in that store, scoring stance, I remember that's the way he looked at Texas A&M, and he just kind of gets bent over there. And Elliott, to add the extra point, is good. You, you know something about Spike Pikes. <laughs> if you can predict the touchdown based on his body language. Now, one more look at a well-thrown ball under pressure. Well, Gray looks this ball all the way in because he gets a flash right in front of him. And you can see it's not poor defensive coverage. Coverage was right there. It's just Gray goes into the end zone. Again, now watch Gill on the tail end of this. Now, see, he can see Davis coming right there. He knows he's coming. Boom, down he goes. Mike Daxon's worried about it all week. After they went over Texas, they are on fire in the first half and up 17 to nothing. And Elliott's big kick through the end zone has the Frogs back at their own 20 as they try to mount a comeback. Our Schick permanent storyline, Kordsman may have uh, committed the key mistake, really, by missing that field goal and giving TCU a chance to go up 3-0. Instead, still scoreless, and Tech has taken it from there with already 149 total yards by Gray, including a 69-yard run and the 34-yard touchdown catch. And Gray over 114, 114 yards. There's the drive, six plays, 86 yards, three minutes and two seconds. That's the tight end Blackwell and Kelly Blackwell, a man in pain. He missed three games with the broken thumb. He has played now three weeks in a row, but still has it heavily wrapped. And it really hasn't had any effect on his ability to catch the ball, surprisingly. Now, the interesting thing right here is the first thing you start saying is, what does TCU have to, have to do to get back in this football game? They had an excellent drive. The only thing that stopped that drive was a mistake by the quarterback, eating it for a 10-yard loss instead of throwing it downfield. They have driven the ball at times well. Just don't abandon your game plan right here. Stick with it. That helps. Monken spinning for a first down nine yards before Tracy Saul made the tackle. And there's a real tendency, Dave, for, for teams to start abandoning their game plan when they're down 17 points. But they practice the plays. They practice them well. They've had some good drives. They've had segments of good drives. They don't capitalize on that field goal, and then they get that sack, which led to the punt, where they had to punt it. But other than that, they have driven the ball well. So, again, stay with the things that you do best. Still Mikens. Flag is down as he bursts up near another first. He's across the 45 if it stands, and Brian Dubisky was there from strong safety for the tackle. And that flag was thrown usually where holding was, but TCU is signaling, hey, wait a minute, it's going against them. And you see where they're talking. But Alexander, our referee, personal foul, face mask. Uh -huh. Well, that's a pretty good eyesight yeah. in the midst of 10 bodies converging like that to see a face man. Well, what that usually is, is is a trail defensive lineman reaches out to try to stop a pulling guard or pulling tackle, and he pulls him down by the face mask. Face mask, defense, first down. There's our crew. The gentlemen we met this morning. Yeah, I, I, I wish I had a dollar for each one that said me. He said, now look, make us look good. Make us look good. <laughs> I said, you make yourself look good. <laughs> now they're a fine crew. First down and 10 as they tack on the penalty to what Monkins had already done. And it's now from the Raider 40 yard line. Monkins, the hot back, trying again. This time brought down by Perry after a gain of only one. Charles Perry, the third leading tackler. 
as you look at Troy Henning to the nose guard who also helped out. And I can tell you that Jim Wacker and his staff, they've decided that they are going to stay with their game plan. They're not abandoning it. They're trying to stay calm out there. I'm sure they're upset with a 17 to nothing deficit. But again, they're staying with their game plan. They want to give some confidence to their diva, their, their offensive team. Giles barely gets it off going for Jackson, who almost makes a sensational over-the-shoulder catch. What a pass by Giles that was. I mean, he had to turn and throw this thing up quickly. Watch Giles. See the pressure? Boom, he had to throw that ball up high and hope that he was going to be able to run underneath it. And almost does. Ferguson and Dubisky right there with Michael Jackson. And Jim Wacker and company making some wholesale changes on what will be third down at a long nine. And here again, they're in position to get something out of it, but they're faced with the key situation, and they've had trouble cashing in so far today. Play action, and Giles again going long, this time for Shipley, but intercepted by Tracy Saul. And out of bounds at the 42. Giles never saw Saul back there at the safety spot. Saul is the middle. He's like the center fielder on the play, and you can see. Now watch. You see Saul in the back. He's just playing the quarterback, playing the ball. He goes right up, just makes a perfect catch. And I don't think Giles ever saw him in his defensive plan. When he was coming down there, he was strictly geared in on Shipman. See him looking there? He never sees Saul just standing out there playing center field. Saul goes high, knocking down. But he had a good chance to intercept that ball. Simmons with the wind. Even better than that 51-yarder into the wind. And here is a big mistake by the freshman Mike Houston returning it from the goal line and barely cracks the 10. In Austin, I said, join us for exciting Southwest Conference football right here on Raycom Sports and Entertainment. Well, not to single out Mike Houston, because you see guys even in the NFL do that, but it is amazing how many people try to return punts from well inside the 10. Well, what you do, what the coaches teach you to do is to stand on the 10-yard line and don't back up. Don't take a step back and catch the ball. That time he backed all the way to the end zone. Well, overthrown just off the fingertips of Motkins on first down. The one positive for TCU as you look at Giles' afternoon so far, is if this were last year and they were still strictly a running team, you'd have to look at a 17-0 deficit and say they may never get back into it, but their offense is structured to where 17-0 isn't necessarily fatal. No, this is a lot, this triple shoot is a lot like the run and shoot, except they use a tight end in it. And you can score a lot of points quickly when you get hot. They really need Ron Giles to get hot and complete five or six passes in a row. And that one well snipped out by Ronald Ferguson, who was all over Michael Jackson. Well, if I if I see one fall on Giles, it's just that he zeroes in on his receivers. And watch here. Now he's going to throw to his left. See, now he's looking to his left. Look at the eyes up. He never looks back over here to the right. He just looks. He zeroes in on that uh, on that wide receiver that's that's intended. That's his primary receiver. And even if you're going to run a slip screen like that, a little screen after the flat, you sometimes got to come off and look somewhere else and then come back to him. And that led to that Saul's interception and that play by Ferguson where they knew exactly where the ball was coming. Motkin slipping off Charles Rowe up to the 17. And the Frogs now 0 for 6 on third down attempts. Boy, now's when this uh, West Texas wind starts to play because they've got the wind in their face. And it is starting to swirl a little bit more. We're getting a little bit more as we look at the camera there from right to left as we look again at our Dr. Pepper roundup. Virginia taking control of that game. Rex Roberts, only the ninth-rated punter in the Southwest Conference, needs a boomer here. And instead gets a low wobbler. And Saul, one of the top front returners in the NCAA, retreats back to midfield. Saul came in number 12 in the nation with an average of just over 13 yards per punt return. Well, that's a hard one to return because it's it's low and it's short, and you don't get time to get behind your behind it, get behind your wall. James Gray, we mentioned early on, when he gains 100 yards, they almost never lose. They're 12 and three, and then when he doesn't get 100, they're below 500. Yeah. And there he is today. So if figures hold true, there's a lot of smiling people in red here today. 
Had a couple of 200-yard efforts, and he's certainly on pace for that. And this isn't going to hurt. Reggie Campbell chases him down, but he's inside the 30. And the third huge gainer already by Gray. Boy, I'll tell you, he takes a little stutter step. Now watch. And then just all of a sudden plants. Nice look, nice looking, looking into the ball, and then just picks up a couple blocks right here. Doesn't try to break him to the corner, just keeps on going. He tries to cut back underneath there. Gets, he gets taken down, but Gray just has that explosiveness. And you know, I, interesting enough, I don't know that he's missed a game. I, I don't think he's missed a game ever. Uh, as we were doing that stat work to see how many times they won with that 100 yards. This is Winston, and he bursts straight up the middle. Jason Cobble with the ankle tackle, so after Gray went for 23, Winston quickly for seven more. And the blocking up front for Texas Tech, oh, can't ask for any better execution at this point. No, it's big time blocking up front. They really, they run the ball well. They're all seniors, we talked about them. And there were a lot of pro scouts here today to look at some of these seniors. Richburg and Odeorn and Wright, Webb and Duval, they signs another one back there. They've got a lot of strength up here. First down and 10. James Gray, touchdown. This is going to be the James Gray show today. We've talked a lot about what he's done in the past against TCU, but I think he's already topped what he's ever done in the past against TCU today. After a 34-yard touchdown reception, a 16-yard touchdown run. That's his fourth run already of at least 16 yards, so 23-0 Texas Tech. And Simmons cannot bring in the snap. And, of course, you can run him back, but it's down at the 10, and that will keep it at 23 to nothing. Boy, he just sets up his blockers so well in there. Watch Gray when he gets the ball. We, we talked a lot about vision, but look at right this. He just sets up his blockers real well, dips back inside. He just kind of like sheds people off. I'll tell you one thing. If Charles Odeon wants to get a good, uh, a good look from the pros, watch this block. Boom, turn him inside, make him go around, come back on him, recover. And that's a fast Roosevelt Collins that he does that to. One of the scouting services says Odeon may have improved his position more than anybody else in college football, if you can believe that. That's a left offensive tackle who has made that kind of stride this year. And one reason that James Gray now is well over 1,000 yards. What's a Nebraska guy doing in Jones State? <laughs> I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to think on that one a while. <laughs> on up the ladder, and with that run, he has now passed Walter Abercrombie and sets his sights. On Curtis Dickey, he may have Dickey by halftime. Yes, he might. <laughs> we still have almost eight minutes, seven minutes and 47 seconds in this quarter. And I think Mike Houston learned his lesson. He's not going to return this one from eight yards deep. James Gray, 11 carries, 153 yards, and we are not yet to the halfway point of the second quarter. I have to, I'm just trying to think how quickly that what that average is per carry. That's an unbelievable average. 11 carries, 153 yards. Kurt McCarley, the human computer, is going to <laughs> get out his pencil. He rarely uses a pencil. This is an upset. 13.9 per carry. ECU now down 23 nothing. Will lose on first down. Tom Mathismeyer. All over Curtis Motkins, who gets up slowly. Boy, he just swallowed Motkins. There's Sullivan. You know, there now there's a real blocker also. Mike Sullivan. They they have him listed in the in the press book as last year having 16 pancake blocks. Now you know what a pancake block is? Flat on his back. That's when you knock the guy across from you flat on your back, on his back. And if he's hurt, boy, that's all they need. They've already had to scramble their offensive line after the 50-yard three-play scoring drive in 50 seconds. Made it 23 to nothing. 50 plays, 50 seconds. 50 yards, 50 seconds. Excuse me. Modkins in motion after no game. Second and 10. Giles almost the great stretching grab by Michael Jackson with the coverage by Quentin Rhodes, the backup right quarterback. 
Boy, the coverage has been there for Texas Tech and Notre Dame. Now in the third quarter, stretching it out to 49 to 6 over SMU. I thought that was interesting. We look at that score that uh, uh, Notre Dame said they wanted to come down there with class and play SMU or, or have SMU play with class when they when they played them, I should say. Says a lot about Lou Holtz. Don't look for any 95 points today. Nope. Another tough third and ten, and on play action, Giles for Michael Jackson, immediately brought down by Saul, and again, the secondary knows exactly where the ball's going. Well, prior to this year, prior to prior to coming in this year, as we watch Saul, he's going to be number six. Now he's got he's got him all the way out of the backfield. There he slips out of the backfield, and boom! Watch Saul just close. Prior to coming into this season, I mean to tell you that was probably their pri their primary concern was their secondary. They had lost everybody, and now they have back there a soft, two sophomores, a freshman, and a junior. Marcus Washington almost blocks the Rex Roberts punt, which is returned by Saul for maybe five yards up near midfield. And in the field position game, big advantage Texas Tech, as well as total yards, and look what Gray by his lonesome has done. That's amazing. Already. This may be a day where he can go for his personal high, and he's already cracked that a couple of times with well over 200 against Arizona and Rice. 23-0. Six minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half. This is not what we expected, nor did the odds makers expect this. This was picked as only about an eight-point Texas Tech win. Well, the thing that's been interesting about TCU is that they have played well. When they haven't turned the ball over, they've been very competitive. And only the one interception today. It's been big... First down, Anthony Lynn inside the 40, eight yards. Charles Odeorn again with the key block, and Greg Moore with the tackle. There's that boy. That's a big block on Collins there. Yep, and wait, he got a little hand stuck on there. <laughs> Just briefly grab that jersey, yeah. and usually you have to hold it a second or two. Seems like before you get a holding call. The play selection heavily ground oriented as expected for Tech. Play action. And Gill with the dump off to Lewis Sheffield. And another nice big gainer to the 22 yard line. 16 yards on this pickup. Where everything is going right. I think if there's one thing that Spike Dykes and his collection of coaches, what they did the, probably the best this week is to bring this Texas Tech team back down to earth after that big Texas win. It was probably foremost on his mind this week is not to take the enthusiasm away from them, but to keep the enthusiasm, but to make them have good preparation. All, all year long, he said, we don't have any, any kind of confusion about who we are. We know we're not the number one team in the nation. We know we have to be at maximum effort every week to have a chance to win. And they have never had any illusions about how hard they have to work to get a win. Winston brought down by Buddy Wyatt here. And Dykes also saying yesterday that the key there is just be honest with them from the very first day of spring football because as long as you're honest, they will continue to believe whatever you tell them. Well, I asked, I asked him if I said, did you yell at him? Some coaches will yell at him trying to bring him down. And he said, I'm just trying to be honest, just exactly like what you said. However, I went in and saw a couple of guys in the equipment room and they said, let me tell you something. He leaned on him hard on Tuesday. He brought him back down to earth Tuesday. And that's... Gill for the end zone for Travis Price and just underthrown. And Price, I'll tell you what happened to Price. He stumbled. Before he make his, made his break, he seemed to stumble. It looked like he tripped over the goal line. There's Price, number 10. Now watch right in here. He gets hit a little bit. Now he stumbles right there. The pass is well thrown. He almost recovers. I'm not so sure that that's not pass interference. Reggie well, Campbell, you had to think that the ball, if it wasn't in the air, was milliseconds away from yeah. being launched by Gill when he gave him that little jog near the goal line. So third and nine, and they go with three wideouts. Byron Hooper went in motion. Gill with the swing pass to Winston. And on the second effort, he's got the first down. Maybe goal to go from the 10. 12 yards on the completion to Winston. I can tell you, it's like a snowball when you're out there on defense. Everything works well. 
Now watch when he makes his cut. He's got the first down right there. He still stays up at the first down. Again, he didn't dip back and lose that first down, but everything's going well for Texas Tech. And it's interesting when you watch Gill make his delivery, because we've seen him throw flat-footed, that time leaning back off the wrong foot, kind of side-arming it in. We've seen that, especially early in the year, the side-arm uh, effect when he's trying to get somebody out of the backfield, but he finds a way to get the job done. Anthony Lynn cracked down at the six by Robert McWright. Lynn, the sophomore from Salina. Boy, McWright just turned around and said, you're not going to run over me. <laughs> when he turned a corner, that was just one-on-one -on -one tackling. Former junior college All-American, McWright started his college career at Ranger Junior College here in West Texas. And in his second year with the Horn Frogs. Gain of five for Lynn. Price goes wide left along with Manny Weather. And again, they break the eye, give to Lynn. And keeps going and has the touchdown. Quite a different running style from James Gray with those low feet along the ground. Anthony Lynn is more of an upright runner and just kind of turns his body and has good body lean and just kind of just finds a way to find himself in that end zone. That's the fifth time he has done that this year. Lynn Elliott has got to be winded. This is his busiest first half of the season. And he makes it 30 to nothing, Texas Tech. One more look at the running style you talked about. Yeah, this is the upright running style. Now watch, see when Lynn gets to see how he stands straight up. Good foot action, though. Nice balance, and again, just keeps on, has good sight at that line, he knows exactly where he's going to go. Again, here's another angle from up above. He's following them big blockers right there. Good balance right in there to get those feet back down. Again, stumbles, but yet stretches to get over the line. Well, you can win a free round trip or two to London, England on British Airways. Some lucky South Coast Conference fan will spend five days and four nights in beautiful London. For your chance to win, send a 3 by 5 postcard to this address in Charlotte, and your entry must be postmarked by November 14th. The winner will be selected by random drawing and announced during halftime of our final Raycom telecast. Another quick drive, 51 yards, capped off by... Anthony Lynn's fifth touchdown, 30 to nothing. We're still not done. 3.08 to go in the first half as Houston stands at the identical spot where he caught the last Lynn Elliott kickoff, and Elliott is about as good as there is in the conference at preventing runbacks. Well, when you have a 15, 20 mile an hour wind, it doesn't hurt either, which he usually does here. <laughs> Well, now you would have to think that mentally this game really changes for TCU. Well, it does, but again, you know, you've got so many young players out there, you try to do the positive things to see if they can get back in this. 52-6, still third quarter is the Irish out of field goal. Rutgers still on top of West Virginia. And Curtis Montkins with a quick cut back, gain of three, maybe four. Brian Dubisky, the strong safety, and another former walk-on, now starting for Texas Tech, made the tackle. Tommy Palmer played the first series. We haven't seen him since. No, we haven't. I was wondering when we were going to see Leon Clay, too, come in. Different quarterback, because obviously Ron Giles just hasn't, he just hasn't been able. It's not no fault of his own. He hasn't really forced bad plays with maybe some of the selections. You just, you just look for something to spark your team on. Flag down as Giles cuts back into the middle on the keeper and shows his running ability. If it stands, he's got 15 yards and a TCU first down at the 38, but it will not as holding is the call against TCU. Well, and I can tell you what a deep hole it's like. I know the feelings of the players down there on both sides. There's jubilation on Texas Tech. They're exciting. The coaching staff will keep them somewhat uh, under wraps because they don't want them to get too excited out there. But for TCU, mm. for Jim Wacker, he's got to find a way to, to find the things that are working, if, if anything, in this first half. Obviously, not much has worked for him, but they really need to get some type of a scoring drive before half. It's just so important to go in on a positive note. And it's turning into another one of those Novembers for Jim Wacker. 
who always has the tough conference games, the Texas game, the A&M game, the Tech game in November, but very rarely has he had any November success, with the exception of the Blue Bonnet Bowl season of 1984. Giles chased, lets it go, intercepted and dropped by Ronald Ferguson. He had six points if he hangs on. Boy, this is when you run back and say, I had it. <laughs> you watch this, Giles again uh, just throws the ball right to Ronald Ferguson. Look at that. Ferguson, it's almost like he's oblivious to red shirts. Now, I would think that red and white, uh, you can see where they are. But it's almost as if Giles just, just going to put that ball there, regardless of anybody's there. He probably is so reliant upon that ability, just forces the ball in. Under two minutes to go in the half. Now third down. And half a mile. Ball is caught at the 29-yard line by Cedric Dickens, true freshman from Quana here in West Texas for 15. And where they mark it is everything here because he was close for the first down, but he appears to be a yard shy. Big decision here. You, there's, a, there's a tendency by the coaching staff to say, gosh, let's go for it. But if you don't make it, you give the ball up on the 29-yard line. You cannot afford to do that. And Jim Wackery, as he looks up there, knows that he can't afford to do that. So he sees one of their top plays of the first half only set them up for another punt. And Tracy Saul stands at his 36-yard line. Lock rolling, 113 and counting. They fake it. And Greg Moore has the first down. How about that? Well, we saw that uh, that happen in reverse a few weeks ago against Baylor, but this time it works for a first down. They needed something. They just need something. This time, though, the running back, he just kind of makes a little quick dip. He didn't have James Francis in front of him, and he makes that first down. They needed something. You almost have to have some type of a score, even if it's a field goal try. And you can see Jim Wacker there urging on those players. Listen, we got to get something in here. Well, he's going to be bouncing off the walls at halftime. He figured trailing 30 nothing. Giles play action. Has to step up. He'll run. Into Red Raider territory and inside the 45-yard line. 20 yards on the pickup before Ronald Ferguson blasted it. And Giles, we've seen, had trouble with zeroing in, not looking off secondary receivers. On the other hand, on those last two carries, one of which was brought back. We see what made him an All-American quarterback at Houston Madison. Absolutely. I'll tell you one thing. He, this may be the one where you say make him pass it and don't let him to run, don't allow him to run it. But he just puts his head down. This is not the old safe one. This is just put the head down. I don't care. We got to do something to get some motivation here. He just put his head down and tried to run over him. And the Frogs had burned their first time out with 57 seconds before halftime. TCU two and four in the conference, four and five coming in, and the Red Raiders six and two, and still with some Cotton Bowl hopes at three and two. They need a lot of help. They almost need a miracle, but in some regard, they can control their own destiny because the thinking is if they win one more game, they still have SMU. That should be a win. They still have Houston, which is going to be tough, but a seven and four record they think should get them into a bowl, and they are ranked for the first time in a dozen years. The Independence Bowl is here, and some other bowls, while they're not scouting today's game, have an eye on it, and they've been in phone contact with the Red Raider Athletic Department. And I'll tell you this, if this Texas Tech team goes to a bowl, they'll take 15,000 fans with them, because there's a, there's a great following here. Giles, the little slip screen again, bobbled and dropped by Modkin. Second time that has happened. Ryan Gerlich was the nearest defender. Bodkins could have gone maybe for another 10 or 15. Now, Kortzman standing on the sideline. He's warming up. He has kicked 253 yarders back in high school, but he's only a freshman. But he's got a strong leg. But into the wind, you've got to figure they need at least another 15 yeah. yards. Virginia now 24 0 at halftime. Everybody out on the pattern. And the catch at the 38-yard line by Blackwell, who's immediately thrown backwards by David McFarland. And the clock rolls inside of 40 seconds. Rock still have two timeouts. And this is third call of the long three. Way off 
of Michael Jackson, who was open at the 21-yard line. And it, again, was only Michael Jackson. Jackson was open, but Giles, in his effort to get him, he backed out of the, out of the pocket and never stepped forward to deliver that ball. It brings up fourth down. That was a critical down. Because I don't know that he can kick a field goal from this range with the wind, as you said, blowing in his face. I don't think so. 55 yards is what he'd need. But what a critical play right there. Giles had to deliver that time, just it wasn't able to come through with it. So to no one's surprise, they go for it on fourth and four. And through the hands of the usually reliable Kelly Blackwell. Well, Broken fairness, thumb at all. In fairness to Blackwell, this is not an easy catch. It's kind of behind him and low. See how he has to reach back behind him? He almost has to turn completely around. That was a tough catch. So the ball over on downs, and there is a Red Raider down, and it's Ronald Ferguson. Junior from Sugar Land, who became a starter midseason, and that's one of the moves that really solidified their secondary when they elevated him. Yeah, he's a senior citizen back there. He's a junior. <laughs> junior with two sophomores and a freshman. That's got to be one of the most pleasant surprises for Spike Dykes and his coaching staff is the, the balance that they've played and the way they played in the secondary. Well, 25 seconds to go before halftime. Talked about the youth for TCU, and if you throw out SMU, which is almost all freshmen, they are by far the youngest team in the Southwest Conference. They're also operating very shorthanded in terms of scholarships because of the NCAA, uh, the, uh, NCAA probation. They are 20 scholarships below the limit. Well, that one year really hurt them because they had, I believe they had 10 scholarships to give. They gave two scholarships to uh, two junior college transfers. They had two injuries, which ended careers for two players. And they had one person out of that class. They had five people out of that class that are on this team now. So that, you just, you can't, it's hard to overcome that type of a thing when they were limited to just 10 scholarships. And Ronald Ferguson gets an ovation from 39,255, shakes it off. And would appear to be okay. And with 24 seconds to go, Gill underthrows James Gray. Stops the clock with 19 seconds. Well, that's maybe a sign of aggressiveness when you have maybe one snap to run out the clock and they're going for more. Well, 30 points. You, you said it early. You know, 30 points sounds like a rout and uh, the game's well under control. But I can tell you when Texas Tech goes in the locker room, the first thing they're going to say is, 0-0. We play the second half like it's nothing, nothing. If you're on TCU's sideline, you go in there, you try to find the things that you've done right, the plays that have worked, and say, let's just keep on working back at it one play at a time. 12th carry of the game, and James Gray fights off another 17. They stop the clock to move the chains, and on 12 attempts, now 170 yards for Gray. Of course, the first thing comes up is, what's his best? I think that happened this year against Arizona, didn't it? 234 yards in the opener. 14.2-yard average in the gray ometer has, uh, has got to be through the roof today. The gray ometer? Well, they call it gray matter. They call it uh, the gray ometer. What else are they going to call them? Just great. Yeah, the weekly press updates is uh, is called gray matter because they take about two pages to recount what he's done and what he can still do and there's what he's done today second time in his career to go over a thousand yards he did it well in advance of uh, any kind of suspense he broke uh, one of our storylines <laughs> off with about two minutes gone in the game and has taken it on from there he's had a 63 yarder he's caught a 34 yard touchdown pass has run it in from 16 and certainly the biggest individual reason that the Raiders are up 30 to nothing with 12 seconds to go in the first half. Bill looking for Travis Price and overthrows him, and they still have time for one more play with five seconds. Heck, I'd give it to Gray again. <laughs> Why not? Maybe he'll get 200. Oh, uh, they're probably going to have to do something a little bit different there. Surely, you know, they might try a field goal from here. Well, <laughs> ball at the 45. This will be a 62-yard attempt, and Lynn Elliott is on. His longest this year is 51. He did try a 60-yarder, though. Did it hit the upright? 
And the way he kicks off, the leg is strong enough to go up to 70. This one is just off. And it looked like he had enough left. Day. And the fans like Ray Com, and we appreciate that, and they love Tech, and of course we expect that, and they want the Aloha Bowl, and that's not surprising. Who wouldn't if you can't go to the Mobile Combo? Well, that's true, and there's the grass skirts. Well, I hope they have better attractions than that in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spike Dykes would settle for a bowl, and his very first head coaching appearance was in the Independence Bowl. Back in 1986, and the Independence Bowl is on hand, getting an eyeful here at Jones Stadium today. Again, Elliott prevents a run back. Again, the Frogs will have to start at their own 20. And among the things that we thought they had to do, one thing they have done a good job of is avoiding turnovers. They have only one, but on the other hand, uh, that's about the only positive, yeah. really, that you can point to. It really is. I think it's that, that one statistic, zero of nine on third down conversions. That's the that's first and foremost why they're having problems. Ron Giles still the quarterback. Curtis Modkins buried after a gain of perhaps one yard. And the going has been tough on the ground for everybody for TCU. They were held only 74 rushing yards. Troy Hennington in on the stop there. Monkins with more than a respectable first half total, though 10 carries 52. Palmer only four carries for nine yards. And of course, everybody pales in comparison to what Gray has done today. Again, they call on the freshman from Marlin, and he is chased out by Charles Rowe. What a burst of speed for the weak side linebacker from Colleen. Boy, hasn't he had a big year, Charles Rowe. 26 big plays, five sacks, 91 tackles. That's amazing from that linebacker spot. 15 of those tackles, along with a sack, a quarterback pressure, and a pass deflection at Texas last week, so he saved his biggest game for when they needed it. A lot of pressure on Giles here, third down, 12 yards to go. All three wideouts are left, and that's where Giles initially looks and then dumps it over the middle, and incomplete intended for Mike Houston. And let me say, that's the first time I saw Giles look off. That was the first time I've seen him really look off to those three wideouts and try to catch him coming across the, the center. Again, as we watch Giles, now see him looking over there to the left now. Comes back. That's what you've got to do. And he was close on the pass. So Rex Roberts, who seems to have spent his entire day punting into the wind, does so again and again. And over in. Not a pretty punt at all. McFarland bobbles and is turned back at the 42-yard line. Jordy Reynolds with the special team tackle on McFarland. Texas Tech has had outstanding field position all day. And this is among their best as they take over in TCU territory. Well, they have had their, they have really had won the battle of field position. I can't tell you the number of times that they've been in, in right at midfield. It's amazing. Gill, 6 of 13. The big completion, 34 yards and a touchdown to James Gray. And as we mentioned, the number 13 ranked passer in the NCAA, number three in the conference. And the number one among non-Houston quarterbacks. Up to the 35-yard line on the first down gain. Nine yards for Gray, giving him 179 for the day. And Richard Booker, the strong side linebacker, made the tackle. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. This is Channel 8, WFAA-TV, Dallas, Fort Worth. James Gray got him in good shape on first down, and Lewis Sheffield first for an easy first down up to the 26. Sheffield, who had averaged nearly five yards per carry, comes in, just kind of blends in. All the Red Raider running backs have great yards per carry averages. Well, it all starts with that up front line. I know we've talked about them. It probably sounds very repetitious for people out there, but it is an outstanding unit. They've got seven. Of the first five are all fifth-year seniors. They've got seven fifth-year seniors, great depth, and have had no injuries this year.
Bill on first down. The pitch, James Gray, follows those blockers and has the 20-yard line, seven more yards. Robert McWright made the tackle. And when James Gray came out of Trimble Tech High School in Fort Worth, no one would have predicted what he's done. He has now surpassed Curtis Dickey. He is number six and climbing. Boy, and he sure is climbing fast. He's got a long way to go to the catch uh, Curtis Dickey. He, I don't believe he'll catch Curtis Dickey. I don't think so. Uh, or, or you mean uh, Eric Dickerson? I mean, yeah, that's what I meant, Eric Dickerson. What am I thinking of Curtis Dickey for? Because he just passed that's him. That's right, because he just threw him. But the question right now is how long do you leave him in? I'm sure that's on a lot of minds right now. Well, remember, he had 234 against Arizona. That's the second best day ever by a Red Raider. And Sheffield drops it, and it is a TCU recovery at the 26-yard line. Jason Cobble. Boy, he just ripped the ball out of his hands. Watch Collins right here. It just looks like he just gets Pickens trying to get wide on first down. First to speed, first down up to the 36-yard line, 12 yards before Tracy Saul made the tackle. And at least a start, maybe a building block of a comeback for TCU. Well, that's the way you come back in a football game. You don't come back starting to throw those 40 and 50-yard bombs. You come back by starting to do things right, get a good drive, got a little bit of confidence in your offense, have your defense come out. They have confidence. They try to stop them. That's the way you come back. You don't come back by throwing the, the 40, 50-yarders. Jackson and 4A go to the right side, and Dickens is wide left. As they keep it on the ground, and Mockins. Again, the left side, knocked out of bounds. Given four yards. Mockins, a real workhorse, and a man who turned down, among others, University of Houston. They figured that, like TCU, he would fit right into their run and shoot scheme as a slot back and started the year basically a scout team member, and then Tony Darthard went out, he is out for the year after knee surgery, and that's when the focus came down on Palmer and Mockins. And we have only seen Palmer for a couple of possessions today. Giles, great time to let it fly, and again, slightly behind his intended receiver, Alan Foray, who was well covered by Walker. Sammy Walker may be getting some all-conference mentions after the great game he had in Austin. Tough couple of interceptions last week. He's tied for fifth in the conference now with a total of four. TCU still over in third down conversions today. Now this is another one of those big third down conversions. Third down and five. Now it's important that they don't try to go and get the big play. Just try to get that first down. Get your receivers down there seven to ten yards and pick up the first down. Keep this drive going. Play action. And Giles spinning out of the tackle, but not the second tackle. Brian Gerlich and Tom Mathis Meyer doing a number on Ron Giles here. And boy, did Mathis Meyer, he just flew in there. Watch him, number 87. Boom. Giles never saw him and could not recover. And there's Mathis Meyer back on it again. Let's see who else was in there? There's someone else in there. Brian Gerlich. Yeah, Gerlich was in there. Gosh. Boy, they just. Again, 0 for 11 on third down conversion. Well, Kevin Portsman is going to try his hand as a punter. And he's got great hang time, but very little distance. And out of bounds, Gill with the swing pass. Clifton Winston cut down from behind by Daryl Davis, who again shows that quickness. 4.56 speed for Davis in the 40-yard dash. And don't forget, Dave and I will select the Coors player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast. I'll bet that'll be a surprise. At the I think day. we could make our selection <laughs> right now. Well, there's a lot of time left. 25 minutes to be exact. Jimmy Gill mainly just handing off, but when he's gone to the year, he's done it for some big plays. Anthony Lynn coughs it up again another Horn Frog recovery and this time in Red Raider territory and Robert McWright right there in the thick of it again sometimes in that effort to get that extra yard you get careless with the ball 
And I think that's what he does in this play. He gets a little careless with the ball. He breaks this tackle, but watch the effort. See now he gets hit from behind. He's moving the ball. You've got to, when you're being tackled, you've got to tighten that ball down and keep it in front of you. Don't swing it like you would do as a while you're running. And it gives TCU their best field position by far of the day. Well, it is all over in South Bend, Indiana. 59-6. Probably not as bad as a lot of the SMU fans expected before today. Motkins may have a first down as he gets inside the 35-yard line. McWright, after the recovery, it's the third turnover by Texas Tech, two of which have been caused by Collins stripping the ball. You know, when you talk about field position, how important it is, on the 10 possessions that TCU had before this, their best start was on their own 25-yard line. Now they get it for the first time in Texas Tech's territory. Nine yards on the first down gain. Second and a short one, and Watkins easily has that and more to get inside the 30. Row again with the tackle. I think we've got someone hurt down there. Well, that would be Mike Derryberry. The man who started for Matt Wingo today at middle linebacker. Darryl Berry, uh, one of the returning tacklers from last year, but we've told the story about how he came in overweight. Wingo beat him out. Derry Berry still goes left and dragged down after a gain of three by Mike Lissio, the backup right defensive end. Redshirt freshman from Richardson Lake Highlands. That was an interested fan. I think the thing for TCU to do right now is try a reverse. The way Texas Tech is running the football and running as hard as they are in pursuit is the perfect time for the reverse. Of course, I have no way to tell Jim Wacker that, but uh, is his body language as easy to, to pick up on as Mike no, does? No. If he leans forward, it may mean nothing. Well, blind bootleg, and now Giles going for Blackwell as a first and goal at the three-yard line. The coverage semi nearby by Quentin Rhodes, but a wide open Blackwell, basically. And Giles did a good job finding it. Well, that's kind of like a reverse. It's kind of a naked reverse, a bootleg. And they seized Blackwood. I thought he was going to overthrow it here. I really thought he was going to overthrow it, but he just was leading Blackwell. Blackwell comes down with a big catch, and now they are in scoring position. And all of a sudden, you start saying, now look, your defense, you, got, you can see the crowd start to get into it, too. Very, very back in for Tech. He's okay. In the wishbone. Michael Jackson trying to get inside the one. And Perry and Hennington squeeze down on him from defensive tackle and nose guard, respectively. Jackson normally a pass receiver. And uh, one of the few times, just the ninth time all year, he's been called on to carry the ball. This is no slouch defensive unit. I remember them stopping, wasn't it New Mexico? They stopped four times inside the two-yard line to win that game. Give it one, so second and goal now from the two. And this is Motkins, and he gets nowhere. Larry Eaton, a freshman out of Houston, Waltrip, came up and made immediate contact. Well, look and see who wins the control of the line. Look at the red shirts. One getting driven off, but look at the penetration there by the red wave in there. That's just a match, and when it's even, it goes to the defense. No gain on second and goal, so third and still from the two. I think you have to go wide to use the speed of one of these wide out, one of these runners. Giles into the end zone, Blackwell, touchdown. Boy, he pulled that one out. I want to tell you, that one faked me out. I thought he had given it around the end. That was a good call. Excellent fake by Giles on the run to allow Blackwell to slip, slip out into the flat area. Good call by Jim Wacker, who signals in the plays. Really was, and Giles congratulated after his seventh touchdown pass, second catch for a score by Kelly Blackwell, the sophomore from Fort Worth, Richland. Kevin Portsman on to attempt the point after. Out of Mike Nowak's hold, he is up and good. When you want to see a fake, this is a great fake. Everything leads you left, even our cameraman. Now watch Blackwell here. Comes off the line, immediately gets out of the flat. You can see how wide open he is. Those sure hands he comes down. That was just an excellent call. That fooled about everybody. 
Interesting story about Blackwell. He is the reason that they called this the triple shoot and had to include the tight end. They took a look at him at some other positions, slot back, inside wide receiver. They said he is a classic tight end. We've got to integrate him into the system as a tight end. Other games on our Dr. Pepper roundup. Duke 35-20, about to pull the home victory over NC State as they play in the fourth. 17-7 now for Georgia over number 20, Florida, also in the fourth. And this one has uh, featured a Mountaineer comeback. They had trailed virtually the entire game. Now up by one, also fourth, and Virginia in the third by 16 over Virginia Tech. Airport. This game bore with some Holiday Bowl implications. Uh -huh. Of course, there's Miami leading 3-0 over Pittsburgh. That's a real surprise. Now, let me tell you, that is a surprise. The Kansas 7-7. Seven, seven. Of course, it's in the first quarter. We don't know how early that is. But Kansas not, not expected to do well in that game. And Notre Dame's taking care of business by beating SMU. Now it's up to Colorado. We have Oklahoma State, Kansas State. And then they hope to have the Orange Bowl showdown for number one. Ben Kirkpatrick returns this short kick to the 30. Red Raiders leading 30 to 7. A lot of time remaining. Seven minutes and four seconds in the third quarter. I think that's the thing that Jim Wacker told his troops on the sideline. I saw him take Giles and put his arm around him and point at the scoreboard and said, look, we're down 23 points. We've had nothing go our way. There's still a lot of time in this football game. And they have scored 23 points. You've got... You've got a quarter and uh, almost a half to play, so there's a lot of time. You can't ease up if you're the Red Raiders. Gray back in at the eye back, and he is surrounded and dropped. At the 27, Richard Booker was there, along with Roosevelt Collins, and Greg Moore also came up. So you figure after a 170-yard half, if you're ever going to be a marked man, <laughs> now is the time. Yeah. I think Gray has done a lot better that burst up the middle than going wide. I know he's gone wide well, but I think he's bursted up in those quick traps inside. There's the scoring drive. 33 yards, seven plays, and the result was the touchdown to Blackwell. And for TCU, it has to feel good to cash in on somebody else's turnover. The opposite has been a big part of their story in a four and five season. Draw play. Hole open briefly and then closed again as Collins made the hit after a pickup of five. I want to point out that I think TCU's defense is playing better now than they have in the first half. They've got a lot more life in them. They're, they're starting to react to the football a little bit. That score by the offense not only lifts the offense, it lifts the defense too. And, and they're starting to surround James Gray where he ran free in the first half. Yeah, their heads were spinning after the early big plays in the first half. But they have settled down. Third down at six. Bill Chase by Collins. Down. Roosevelt Collins with another sack. And the sophomore from Shreveport, Louisiana, creates a loss of 12 yards. And what he does is once he gets free, watch the first to speed. Now, this is a good move to get inside, a roll. But now watch the speed right here. Boom. He just turns it on, and he just swallows the quarterback, and he's going against quite a good tackle. That's tra uh, Charles Odeorn, who's probably one of their best blockers. That's why that's such an interesting matchup, though, because Collins is the best quarterback rush man. And we didn't see the flag originally, but it is defensive holding on TCU. That oh. is the last thing Jim Wacker wanted to see. Oh, boy. That really hurts, because third down and five, it's going to be fourth down. They're going to have to punt from their own 20 or holding. so. Holding, defense. 10-yard penalty, first down. Automatic first on defensive holding. Not much to add to that picture of Jim Wacker. Well, I know it's got to be frustrating for Jim Wacker. He's got so many young players. Not that he wants to play them, but that he has to play them. And that's the difference. You can put a freshman here and there, but when you have to play him, it's difficult. Collins again. That's his third straight stop as Gray barely got his nose up over the 45. And this is where you really tell a lot about what is inside a player, the 30 to nothing, or in this case, 30 to seven. Well, I can tell you from a defensive player, there's the final in that West Virginia. They did end up beating Rutgers. As you said, they were behind all day. 
But I can tell you this from a defensive standpoint, you play harder when you lose because you just don't want to be embarrassed. There's a lot of pride out there. This look by the defense. Bill lets it fly way over Anthony Mannyweather. And they've held him in check today. He had the scoring pass to beat Texas last week. Manny Weathers, another interesting story. Walk on who probably would have gone back to Gardena, California if he could have afforded the trip home. So he stayed here for financial reasons and has since, of course, earned a scholarship. And Colorado coming back now at Stillwater in the second quarter. Now here are the clickers in the background. Down at eight, James Gray stopped well shy by Buddy Wyatt, the right defensive tackle, the senior from Victoria Stroman. And the TCU defense is held, and again, we emphasize lots of time remaining, four and a half minutes and counting in the third quarter. And they're probably two big plays away from really putting the pressure on Tech. Especially the first one when they didn't come away with anything on that first turnover. Boy, Simmons is putting on a clinic. And sails that one all the way, winding down. And Curtis Motkins has to reverse field. And now back the other way. Gets a big block and does well to salvage three yards. That could have been a 10-yard loss. Watch a key block here by number one, Todd Holmes. Oh, and you change direction. He has one person to beat when he comes back this way now. But watch the outside containment. Well, you couldn't see it there, but now he goes back. Now watch him peel back on some of these players. Boom. He slips a little bit himself, but he was starting to get some running room. Hennington had it measured, and then Holmes knocked him sideways. So, second down and seven. Tommy Palmer finally carrying the ball again. First down, out across the 30. That's the first time since the first quarter that he's been called on, and he comes through for 12 yards. Now let me tell you how the complexion of this game can change if, on, if TCU is able to drive and score here. It can really change quickly because they have the wind in their face now with three and a half minutes left in this quarter. The entire fourth quarter, they'll have the wind at their back. Maybe one reason they're keeping it on the ground here in the third quarter. Giles, incomplete, tried Blackwell. Well covered in front by Steph Stephon Weatherspoon, and then from behind by Brian Dubisky. Blackwell, 6'3", 240. Nice big target at tight end. The change to the triple shoot, in terms of statistics, has already paid big dividends. They were last in the conference last year in both passing and total offense, and they've gone up to the middle of the conference, and they're fourth in rushing. Lissio giving chase. Giles gets it off. Lucky that one was not intercepted as he tried to get Alan Foray the ball. And Sammy Walker made an unsuccessful dive and can't figure out what went wrong. Well, that was probably the worst pass that Giles has thrown as far as beauty of the ball. The trajectory of that ball was almost end over end. So Jim Wacker again trying to pick up a third down. They need 10 from their own 35. the interception. And Tommy Palmer may get flagged for a face mask as he drove him out of bounds. The second interception today, the fifth of the season for Saul. Palmer got him high, Dave, and then as he drove him out, looked like he got the hand in there on the face mask. Well, they either got the face mask or else they saw it as, as unnecessary roughness. But he did. He slung him to the ground. Saul was making an effort to get out of bounds, and that's just out of frustration. Giles, again, threw the ball when he was under tremendous pressure. He couldn't just relax in there, and he tried to force the ball in. The result was Saul coming down with it. It is a face mask, as you said. And it's also a dead ball personal foul. Well, we're both right. Yep. 
Now watch here. See, now he's under pressure. Boom, he gets hit. You see Saul back there just playing center field? Now watch Saul. He's coming to get out of bounds. He wants to get all the yardage he can, but he's just getting to go out of bounds. And watch here. There's the face mask. Well, that was clearly face mask. Well, I didn't see another late hit, so what he may have just been trying to say is flagrant rather yeah. than accidental face mask. And a 15-yard markoff. Boy, Tracy Saul is something. True freshman, starter virtually all year. Dead ball, face mask. That's, that's what it is, one penalty for yeah. 15 yards. Georgia 17-10 over Florida. Fourth quarter at the Gator Bowl. 32-8 now for Virginia over Virginia Tech, the in-state rival in the third, and Colorado didn't take long to get back on top of Oklahoma State after trailing 10-0. Boy, hasn't Virginia come back well since that kickoff classic when they lost to Notre Dame so, so badly. They come back, and I think they're going to have 10 wins this season. They should be maybe in strong consideration for a New Year's Day Bowl. First down goal, early movement. They will march back as it looked like Charles Lott was well off sides from the tight end spot. And in first and goal, that's where you need more concentration than ever. Well, you have a tendency to lose your concentration when things are going well for you. Kind of get, it's almost like you get a little bit giddy out there. Things are going well and you want to celebrate. It's not many times you have a 30 to seven lead. Well, illegal procedure, offense. There are some TCU supporters here. Made the trip about 300 miles from Fort Worth. Some of them ran that football here. That was quite a tribute. From the 14, straight up the middle, and touchdown number three, James Gray. just keeping up his average. <laughs> I think he was averaging 14 yards a carry at one time today, and he just keeps on rolling. He's now over 200 yards rushing it. Um, if the great Kirk McCarley's not wrong. And he never is. <laughs> 19th carry, 209 yards, and Lynn Elliott makes it 37 to 7, Texas Tech. Well, I told you, I think Gray is better up the middle, and that's what he does. He just bursts up the middle. And there's just nobody's going to bring him down. We've looked at Charles Odiarn all day, and I'll tell you one thing, he blows him off the line. Great seal block. Seals this man outside. Look at the legs. Everybody just keeps on moving those legs. And I think, <laughs> I think even our producer, Johnny Tyus, could have run in that hole. Well, let's not go wild. <laughs> well, he's skinny enough to do it. What a matchup that's been all day long, just a war between yeah. Collins and Odiarn. And there's neither one of them. I mean, both of them have had spectacular plays against the other one. That's the test. Anybody can do well against an inferior opponent, but both of them have had good plays today against each other in that Collins and Odehorn matchup. Air Force leading at BYU in the second quarter, and the winner will be in great shape for the Holiday Bowl. And if, if Air Force does not win the WAC, of course, they will be the front runner for the Liberty Bowl, which you can see right here on Raycom, December 28th. We look forward to that broadcast. Fumble through the end zone by Mike Houston. And TCU at its home away from home, their own 20-yard line to start off. Back down by 30 points now. Man, there's a couple guys. Now those are some of the older players. <laughs> is, is this a former player day? Yeah, these are, they've been out of the system about two years now. <laughs> Well, they're having a great time. There's a great atmosphere here in Lubbock. They are, uh, in talk with Don Buck, the equipment manager, he said everybody's excited about the chance to go to a bowl. Well, how can you not be? Yeah. Team below 500 last year, picked maybe as high as fifth in the preseason rankings. And Curtis Motkins with the flag down does well not to lose yardage again. They mark him out at 22. We may have another face mask. Yeah, that's what it looked like on that play. It looked like somebody raked across the face mask. Not that they used it to tackle, but that they just got the hand up on the mask. Might have been Brian Dubisky, the strong safety. Do you know who just brought me a Coca-Cola? Daddy Warbucks. One of the legends here at Texas Tech, Daddy Warbucks. 
Appreciate that, Daddy. <laughs> the booster to end all boosters here in Lubbock. Face mask, defense, five yard penalty, replay first down. Well, Daddy Warbox has seen just about every football game Texas Tech has played, and he says this may be the best Texas Tech team since the 1976 Steve Sloan team that went 10 and 1 and almost made it all the way to the Cotton Bowl, which, of course, since they joined the conference, the Red Raiders have never done. But this win today, barring a huge turnaround as Motkins reaches the 30, is going to keep their hopes alive. They need a lot of help, but as long as they take care of their own business, they can still legitimately talk about Cotton Bowl chances. Well, you know, in, in talking with Spike Dykes yesterday, one of the things he said that really bothers him is how the old guard seems to control the bowl picture. Now, they've got an outstanding team here, this Texas Tech team, and they should be having a lot of bowl representatives be, uh, coming here to look at them. What's going to burn him is if an inferior record gets a bowl just because of reputation. Right. Because he says, especially the Sun Bowl, Independence Bowl, anything within reasonable drive time, Tech is going to take thousands, and the support should not be the question. Modkins, first down. He needed less than one. He's up near the 34-yard line, and Derry Berry was there for another tackle. He says if they, for instance, go to the John Hancock Bowl in El Paso, 20, 30,000 Red Raider fans are going to make that trip. And the Independence Bowl also, they would have a great crowd. The Liberty Bowl, if we were uh, able to get them another time on Raycom, of course, they have done fantastic on Raycom. Spike Dykes has never lost in this stadium on Raycom. 6-0 coming in. He should have sent a limo for us at the airport. <laughs> Giles, good escapability again. Weaving his way to the 45 for 11 yards. One of the top running quarterbacks in the conference. And that ability of his has been somewhat underplayed because they have gone to such a pass-oriented offense. You want to see a fake. Watch this. Now, he's trapped. He comes back outside this. Now, you want to see a fake right here. This is a fake. Watch when he does this little stutter step and watch the defensive back right there. Look at the... <laughs> Boom, somebody just falls down. Now his own man comes and wipes him out. Giles has him up just across the 45. 107, third quarter. On the draw play, Tommy Palmer gets the call and gets right at the 50. Palmer and Giles, both seniors. They've got this one and one more at Texas next week, and we'll have that one for you here on Raycom. You know what's interesting about this TCU team is that when they play well, they can play with anybody in this conference. That's what's so, I mean, that must be the most frustrating thing for Jim Wacker and his staff is that they show shades of just spurts of, of brilliance. And then all of a sudden they self-destruct. They, they have a turnover, they create a fumble, they take a sack, they just do something that just really critically injures their drives. Palmer again leans forward for four or five. Cases in point there, they're with Arkansas neck and neck through three quarters, and then their depth starts to wear down, and Arkansas runs away from them in the fourth quarter. They outgain Baylor, have a statistical edge in virtually every category, but they turn it over five times, and they lose in Waco. And then when they did put it all together, they dominated a ranked Air Force team, which was the leading running team in the country, and got virtually nothing compared to what they usually are used to. They need one on third down. On perhaps the final play of the third quarter, Palmer has that one plus two more. And they've got the Red Raider 43-yard line. And Palmer, after virtually no action since the first couple of possessions, now getting a lot of third quarter work here. And if I was Jim Wacker and I was looking at a senior-laden team, I'd be going, wow, boy, this is serious. But I think he has, his, the positive thing that he has got to look at is the number of young players that he has on his team and how much of an importance they're playing. I mean, they're not just sitting there watching. 32 out of 65 on his traveling squad are freshmen. Giles to Todd Holm in the fourth quarter with Texas Tech on top by 30, but TCU driving their first and 10 at the Red Raider 33-yard line. And they have more than held their own since halftime, but a barrage of big plays, mostly by James Gray, had him down 30 to nothing at intermission. And Tommy Palmer with the cutback. 
up to the 26-yard line. Marcus Washington hit him there, the sophomore from Colleen. And this has turned into a decent day for Palmer. And you talked about that knee injury that Palmer came back from, and that was quite an injury. Quite an injury. Third quarter stats here. You see again the dominance by Tech. 